Hey guys, Jim Nix with Nomadic Pursuits and I have another video for you in my Making the Photograph series. This is a sunset I shot in Austin. I actually shot it a few years ago, but I used this photo on a recent MacFun webinar that I did for Aurora HDR and I thought that it was a good example of how to use luminosity masking. So I thought I'd make a quick video here outlining this photo and the process I go through to create it. So here are the five uh, images. And I don't need to align or ghost reduction or anything because it was uh, there's no ghosting and there's uh, uh, it was shot on tripod, so uh, no alignment needed. So I'm going to let this guy build here, and there we go. I'm just going to clear that. So there's your base HDR. The first thing I'm going to do is straighten it because I notice it is a little bit crooked. Uh, I'm working with a standalone version here, which gives you the uh, the crop tool. You just click on the scissors, and you can make uh, size and angle adjustments. If you're using it as a plug-in, you would just default to whatever host program you have, like Lightroom, for example. So I'm going to move this a little bit. Uh, whoop, that's way too much. Something like that. Actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit more. Let's try that. Let's just hit Crop. I think that will cover it. Uh, just an example that that's built in. I didn't necessarily have to do that for the video. But I do think it's straighter, which is a little bit more pleasing to my eye. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have the original image here, the base image. You can see there's no adjustments because uh, all of these menu items are still white. Once you start to use them, they turn kind of an orange color. I'm going to start with a uh, balanced and realistic preset. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I think I'm going to do something different. I'm going to I'm going to start with Vivid Memories. I kind of like that. There we go. So let me bring that up. So Vivid Memories, and it's... Uh, it's a preset I like quite a bit. It does give it a nice color pop, as you can see. Let me show you what it looked like and where we are. It was a beautiful sunset uh, also, which I guess is kind of obvious. But uh, I wanted to capture the reflections down here and, of course, the stuff in the sky and, and bring out the color. So here's the original image. I'm just going to leave that preset at 100%, uh, which is Vivid Memories. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. And I'm going to add Realistic Dreamy. I'm just going to call it Real Dreamy here because I'm too lazy to type the entire word. So let me add that. I like this preset a lot, but as you're going to see, it's going to come on a little too strong and really just kind of blow out the sky. So there you go. So let me show you before the preset. That was with the adjustments on the base layer and with the preset. So Realistic Dreaming looks pretty terrible, to be honest. It blew out the sky and just, uh, you know, it just wiped out way too much of the detail. It, it tends to, uh, the preset's great. I love it all. Uh, I use it all the time, but uh, it does have a habit of sort of blowing out the detail and uh, kind of jacking with the, the sky. So I'm going to do something here that I did before and share it with you. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a luminosity mask. So you just click on that menu over here and then you click, uh, click create luminosity mask. It takes it a moment. It needs to go through and do that. Uh, and if you aren't familiar with luminosity masks, I have a video that I shared a couple of uh, maybe a week or so ago, a couple of videos back and it outlines how I build uh, and use uh, luminosity masks. So I think that may be something for you to, uh, to watch. But it's a, it's a great tool. It's super easy. As you can see, it's already done, and it allows you to get a much more natural look. So you can see the luminosity mask is here. Uh, you can see it in the uh, little box here in the, uh, in the layers panel. And let me show you. So there's before, there's after. If you remember, uh, perhaps you still have it in your mind how blown out the sky was. It's a lot more subtle now. However, it's it's not really to my liking. It's still a little too overdone. So I'm going to do something which is really cool, and that is I'm just going to go invert the mask. So instead of basing the luminosity values on the brightest uh, uh, parts of the image, which is what it did here, I'm going to invert it. So it's going to base the mask on the uh, the darker. So there you go. And so look at what a difference that made. That gave a much more subtle and natural uh, view or, or look to the image and much more in, in keeping with that whole theme of keeping a subtle sort of natural application of HDR. So let me show you one more time. That was the uh, uh, base layer with a preset on it and that is the current layer with a realistic dreamy preset and then a luminosity mask and then I inverted the mask to make it basically the opposite. And you can tell here by looking at it that the mask is inverted. And that was it really, you just had to do that quick a little invert mask thing, and if I hit it here, it would go back to the uh, the original mask. I'm not going to do that because I like it the way it is. Uh, the next thing I would do is go work a little bit on the colors. So I'm a big fan of what's called color toning here in Aurora, 
and it's uh, it's generally called split toning like in Lightroom for example it's called split toning and as you can see here if you haven't used it or haven't seen my other videos I use it all the time it's a super powerful but easy to use tool and I, I, I just love it to be honest it helps you really change the mood and the color and the tone in your images very easily what it does is it allows you to change the tint and saturation of the highlights separate from the shadows so you can basically separate the image based on highlight and shadow and adjust the colors there separately so I'm going to go uh, and pick the, uh, one of these presets, and that's what these boxes are. These boxes here are presets. The uh, Let me just click on one to show you. Within that rectangle, the left side is the highlights, and the right side is the, set, uh, excuse me, the shadows. And so that's how you can tell what the presets do. I'll click through some of these. You can just kind of see what they do to the image. That's the one I really like, and I think I'm going to use here. And truthfully, I could... Uh, you know, get to the same result by moving the tint slider and the saturation and protection and, you know, getting over here, there's a color wheel and, and you can play with all that stuff. But the truth is, I don't want to do that. I, I like the preset. I think it looks great already. And let me show you what it did to the image. So there's the image before and there it is. It brought out some more of the pink tones, which I like, and I'm going to give it more of that sort of flavor. And so I'm going to stick with that preset and then I'm going to go to the color menu here and just change uh, some slight things on the saturation. So let me move that a little bit. Maybe bump the saturation and the vibrance a little bit. Something like that. And then the other thing I often do when I'm playing around with colors is I mess with temperature and tint. And I often do that in tandem with color toning. I'll play them off of each other. And you may have heard me say that before. So I'm kind of going temperature to the left to make it a little cooler. But then the tint to the right to give it a little bit more of that pink. So this may be kind of subtle. Let me show you the adjustments. I don't know if you can see that too well in the video, but it gave a little bit more blue, a little bit more pink, but I like that look. And uh, let me show you the, the entire layer here that we're using to adjust the colors. There's the before, a lot more blue, and there's the after. It adds a lot more pink, and to me it really works well with that orange because it's as though as the setting sun is throwing off some of that color as it's descending you know, behind the horizon. And really, um, <clears throat> the last thing I would do here is some denoise, which is amazingly easy. And since it's built into Aurora, I just do it all right here. So I just take the sliders. I might would move this up a little bit, uh, depending on how smooth you want to get. And uh, it just it's really up to you. You know, you can you can do it as far as you want. I'm going to go a little bit more subtle, something like that maybe. Let me. I don't know if you can even see this. Yeah, you can probably see that in the video. A little less detail in the in these clouds. It makes them a little bit more wispy and a little bit more blurred. It almost uh, gives a sensation of a long exposure, which is which is kind of cool. So I like that. Although I don't want to remove the noise from the uh, from the entire image. So as you probably know by now, any adjustments you make over here are global in nature, unless you get your brush and go uh, you know create a mask. So I'm going to get the uh, the brush here. And I'm going to set the opacity for the brush at 100% because I want to remove the noise completely. And I'm going to take this down. And instead of brushing in the noise into these areas, it's actually a smaller area that I want to remove it from. So I'm just going to use the eraser. And I'll just, uh, by the way, left and right bracket key. Right key will make the, the brush larger and left key will make it smaller. So I'm on erase. I'm just going to go erase the noise reduction from some of this land and, and this reflection. There's not really a lot of noise, but I don't want to make the the reflection and the uh, the land too smooth. I want to leave a little bit of detail there. I think it helps the image. So you can always check your mask. I come over here, and you can see that I missed some stuff, which is not unexpected. I generally do miss. That's why I always go and check my mask. So that's close enough. So instead of uh, coming in with the brush and painting the big area in the sky and the big area in the water, I just took the eraser and erased it from the small area of the land and the reflection. It's just the opposite way of doing it. It works the same either way. It doesn't matter. It's just a little bit quicker to do it this way because of there being so much area that is being uh, covered with the noise reduction. So let me show you the before and the after with the noise reduction. Hopefully you can tell it's a little bit smoother. And then let me show you before and after of the entire image. That's before. It's a fairly flat uh, HDR which I like. I think I've said that before. In fact, I'm sure that I have. I like them to be flat because I want to use Aurora to make all my adjustments to the tones, the colors, the contrast, all those sort of things. Uh, so it was fairly flat coming out, which is great. That's your base image with no adjustments. And then here you are after 
a preset on the original layer, a new layer with the preset, also with the luminosity mask that was then inverted, and then a, another layer for colors and a layer for denoise. So uh, two presets and a couple of uh, extra layers for adjustments, and you go from an original that was fairly flat but had some nice colors, uh, but they were kind of muted to a much more dramatic, uh, colorful, and slightly you know tone-differentiated image from, uh, from the original. One more time. Begin, end. And that was a, a few short minutes here in Aurora. That's the power of it. Super easy, super fun to play with, and very capable of helping you create whatever vision you have for your photos. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.